to start with my disclosures. I have conducted research for e-cigarette companies for which my institution has received funding. I've had research for speaking at conferences and um, e-cigarettes for research purposes too. I have no conflict of interest with the tobacco or the pharmaceutical industry. So I'm sure you're all probably very well aware of what electronic cigarettes are by now, so I don't need to really speak much about them, but just to show you um, how different electronic cigarettes can look. So from the first generation devices on your left there, the so-called cigalikes, which can be disposable products or cartomizer devices. Moving on to second and third generation devices, which tend to be much more sophisticated, larger batteries, um, and which use a tank or cartomizer type, sorry, a tank system where the user can fill up the device with bottles of e-liquid. The most recent devices, as you can see, are moving very far away from the cigarette-like, cigarette-likes that we see um, on the left-hand side there, with, often with um, control heads so the user can define some of the settings, the voltage or the wattage that's applied to the atomizer. And these are the kinds that you're, you're seeing here much more today, whereas the first generation types in the UK, in particular anyway, we're seeing these in news agents, supermarkets and so on. So these are the types of devices that um, a smoker would typically encounter um, in retail outlets. So um, if electronic cigarettes are going to be effective at helping smokers to stop smoking, they really need to address tobacco cravings or urge to smoke, as I refer to it, and withdrawal symptoms when a smoker hasn't had a cigarette for a period of time. And two early studies suggest that they, they can be effective in this respect. So when abstinent smokers haven't had a cigarette for several hours and they then use an e-cigarette, we do see a reduction in urge to smoke and withdrawal symptoms. But in these two studies, um, it was found that the magnitude of the reduction with a tobacco cigarette was, um, was much greater. Um, in a later study using a second generation device comparing a nicotine electronic cigarette with a placebo device, we saw a superior reduction in, in urge to smoke with the nicotine device. Um, it is not quite as simple as nicotine delivery, however. So, for example, in a study of 86 abstinent smokers who used either a nicotine first generation device or a placebo, zero milligram nicotine, we found that after five minutes of use, there was a significant decline in urge to smoke in both groups. So here, the placebo was just as good. After 20 minutes, we did see a further reduction with the nicotine e-cigarette, but this was only in men. So in women, even after 20 minutes, there was still a significant decline with the placebo device. There's also evidence from surveys of e-cigarette users that there may be some gender differences with regards to the types of project, products that are chosen, with females more likely to, to opt for a cigarette-like first-generation device and males perhaps more likely to opt for a second generation device. So, quick summary so far, e-cigarettes can really reduce urge to smoke, perhaps not as effectively as tobacco cigarettes. Also, there's some suggestion that non-nicotinic sensory motor aspects of vaping, the visual appearance perhaps, the hand mouth activity, the taste and so on, might also be important. And this might be why e-cigarettes are preferred compared to other methods of, of nicotine delivery. And this isn't new with um, e-cigarettes. We've seen this with, um, in the literature on tobacco smoking. So, for example, smokers report enjoying some of the sensory and the tactile aspects of smoking, the hand-mouth activity, the feeling of the smoke in the respiratory tract, the taste, and so on. And smokers have been shown to prefer smoking a denicotinized cigarette over receiving nicotine intravenously. Also, denicotinized smoking can alleviate some, um, to some extent, urge to smoke and nicotine withdrawal symptoms. So, 
There is evidence then that other non-nicotine aspects of, of smoking may contribute to the kind of rewarding effects and the maintenance of a, a tobacco addiction. Probably because by virtue of their repeated pairing with nicotine as a primary reinforcer, those cues take on themselves some of the kind of rewarding activities of smoking and become moderately reinforcing in their own right. And electronic cigarettes can deliver nicotine and replace some of these other cues associated with smoking too. Well, I've said e-cigarettes can deliver nicotine. Let's have a look at some of the evidence. In fact, early studies suggested that they were pretty ineffective at delivering nicotine, um, showing very, very low levels. But this was in inexperienced users. This was using very early first-generation type devices. So this study was conducted a little bit later last year. And here we can see in regular electronic cigarette users using a first-generation cartomizer device, we can see a significant increase in blood nicotine level, levels after 10 minutes after 10 puffs. And then across a 60 minute ad lib vaping period, a further increase in um, blood nicotine levels, which starts to kind of approximate the level achieved from tobacco smoking after about an hour. The error bars here indicate there was large individual variation. So we had some smokers who, vapors rather, who showed very low levels of nicotine delivery and some showing much, much higher levels than, than we see here. So individual technique appears to be particularly important. There's also evidence that later generation, third generation devices might be more effective at nicotine delivery than, than first. Um, these data are from um, a study conducted by uh, Konstantinos. So you can clearly see here the newer generation device was associated with significantly higher blood nicotine level after five minutes and then continuing through a 60 minute ad lib vaping period. However, this still doesn't approximate the rapid rise that we see from tobacco cigarettes, which is shown from the black arrow here. So we see a huge spike in blood nicotine levels from tobacco smoking. Okay, so having shown that um, e-cigarettes can deliver nicotine, um, the, the next thing I want to talk about is whether visual appearance is important. Um, so electronic cigarettes do take on, the first generation types take on a lot of the characteristics of um, cigarette smoking. So we wanted to explore whether we, if we just altered one aspect of visual appearance, in this case we just used a first generation cartomizer device and replaced the battery for a red battery, would this have any impact on urge to smoke and nicotine related withdrawal <coughs> symptoms? So we had 63 abstinent smokers, they were allocated randomly to one of these two conditions. We excluded anyone who was currently using an e-cigarette um, but we allowed those who had used e-cigarettes in the past, or had tried e-cigarettes in the past, to take part. And we used a, a standard puffing regime, so 10 three-second puffs with a 30-second inter-puff interval. And they all rated their urge to smoke and nicotine-related withdrawal symptoms before and after use. So a simple one item, how strong is your urge to smoke right now? and mood and physical symptoms such as irritability, restlessness, anxiety, standard symptoms from the mood and physical symptom scale. Um, we predicted based on previous evidence that those who had used the white electronic cigarette would show greater reduction in urge to smoke and withdrawal symptoms compared to the red one. And also given that about a third of our sample had previously tried an e-cigarette, we split the sample, um, well, we, we included that in the analysis to see whether there was any difference there according to whether people had had a prior e-cigarette experience. So the graph on the left is those who had used an e-cigarette in the past and on the right, e-cigarette naive smokers. The white e-cigarette is in blue, the red e-cigarette in red. So you can see for those who had had prior experience of using e-cigarette, this wasn't a great deal, they'd only tried it a few times. There's a, a significant reduction in urge to smoke regardless of the colour of the e-cigarette, whereas for those who had never tried an e-cigarette before, there was a significant reduction in urge to smoke only with the white e-cigarette, not with the red e-cigarette. 
So um, visual appearance was important here, particularly for those who had not used an e-cigarette before. And in relation to withdrawal symptoms, here we're seeing a reduction in self-reported nicotine-related withdrawal symptoms um, in both groups to a greater extent with the white e-cigarette compared to the red e-cigarette. So overall, the findings from this study are showing that in this group of abstinent smokers, visual appearance is important, particularly for um, e-cigarette naive smokers. So the next question we were interested in, ans in asking was, well, how important is visual appearance for choice? Which types of e-cigarettes do people opt for initially? And can we predict who is likely to select a first or a second generation device? So we um, recruited 100 abstinent smokers. Again, we excluded any current e-cigarette users, but we allowed people who had used e-cigarettes in the past. And we simply presented them with a first generation um, or a sec and a second generation device, as shown here and said, if you were going to choose to use one of these, which one would you opt for? We thought, based on some of our previous evidence and evidence in the literature, perhaps females and those with uh, no prior e-cigarette use would be more likely to opt for the cigarette. We also looked at age and tobacco dependence as assessed by the Fagestrom test of nicotine dependence, now called smoking dependence, isn't it? Um, and this is what we found. So the... Um, Top box there just shows the percentage of well, the number of people choosing the first or the second generation device and no clear preference for one over the other. So equal numbers of people selecting the first or the second generation device. With respect to uh, which variables might predict choice, age, gender, previous e-cigarette use and so on, none of the variables that we thought might be significant <coughs> predictors were indeed predictors of e-cigarette choice. So, um, the next thing I want to talk to you about was a direct comparison of a first and a second generation um, e-cigarette device. A first generation disposable electronic cigarette and a second generation um, ego um, e-cigarette. And. Um, Previous evidence suggests that regular users, regular e-cigarette users, tend to use the second or the third generation type devices. Um, and also the study, of the blood delivery study I showed you earlier from Constantinos suggests that the later generation devices might be more effective at delivering nicotine too. So we thought perhaps that we might be seeing superior reduction of craving and withdrawal symptoms with the second generation device. Um, the method was the same as previously, random allocation, 10, 10 um, three-second puffs, rating withdrawal symptoms before and after, and satisfaction and hit here too as well. Here are the findings for uh, urge to smoke. So you can see clearly, regardless of whether a smokers had previously used an e-cigarette before, and regardless of first or second generation type, there was a significant reduction in urge to smoke and the same for withdrawal symptoms. So no evidence really that one is more effective than the other for alleviation of urge to smoke and withdrawal symptoms. Um, finally, in relation to satisfaction and HIT, rated both on a three-point scale, here we do see an effect for satisfaction. So for those who use the second generation device, they reported greater levels of satisfaction compared to those using the first generation device, although this wasn't reflected in um, self-reported HIT. So to summarize, electronic cigarettes clearly do deliver nicotine, but not as quickly as tobacco cigarettes. We don't see that rapid um, increase in blood nicotine levels that we do in tobacco cigarettes. I think we can tentatively conclude that visual appearance is important in the early stages of abstinence, at least, for alleviation of urge to smoke and withdrawal symptoms, particularly for those who have not used an e-cigarette before. With respect to initial choice, um, choice seems to be a very individual um, thing. We, we weren't able to predict 
who would select a first versus a second generation choice, and equal numbers of smokers opted for first and second generation e-cigarettes. And the devices that we chose to, to use here were shown to be equally effective in terms of reduction of urge to smoke and nicotine withdrawal symptoms, although the second generation device perhaps more superior in terms of reducing, sorry, uh, more satisfying. And based on the comments that our smokers gave us, we think that was because the um, vapour from the second generation device was rated as kind of smoother, whereas the, the, the uh, feeling of the vapour in the mouth from the first generation device was said to be a bit harsher. So that's perhaps where we see the increased ratings of satisfaction. So I think uh, first generation devices clearly have their place um, in terms of drawing users in and showing superior effects for um, alleviation of withdrawal symptoms, but I suspect based on previous evidence that um, um, smokers, vapors rather, tend to use second and third generation devices, particularly for quitting, that those immediate advantages perhaps dissipate quite quickly over time. But it hasn't been explored prospectively, so nobody's followed up users to see what factors determine swapping and changing to different generation devices. And I suspect as one's identity as a non-smoker changes, that perhaps choice of e-cigarette changes too, that, that that needs to be explored. And finally, um, the first generation device that we selected here um, turns out from a paper published by Gonowitz and colleagues to be particularly effective in terms of nicotine release to vapour perhaps better than some of the other first generation devices on the market, so we can't generalise our findings to all first generation types. And recent evidence from um, constantly, const um, Farsali, I'm blending your first and second name there, suggests third generation types may be, may be superior too, so still lots of unanswered questions here. So I'd just like to finish by thanking um, my project students and interns, Catherine, Yazo, Gina and Naomi. Also, Elites and Totally Wicked supplied the e-cigarettes that we use in these studies. Thank you.